was on the earth. All over school there were Christmas cards and trees and trimmings and every break time we would line up to kiss Martin Roebuck under the mistletoe in the reference section of the library. <laughs> Christmas also saw the culmination of Gail's interest in Mr Nixon. I love him. No you don't. don't. I do. I'm infatuated. What's it feel like? <laughs> Great. Hey, I got to sit on his table at the Christmas dinner. Oh God, yeah, but does he love you? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to find out at the Christmas dance. Oh, why? What are you going to do? Snog him. Oh, oh no, no, you're not. What? I'm going to need some courage for oh, Jerry. I don't believe you. No. I've got it all worked out. Yeah. You're going to go to the off-license and buy some cider. Uh, why me? And then I'm going to go and bring some spring onions and then we'll drink the cider spring. and we'll eat the spring onions. Why spring onions? Well, because Dog and Mr Atten are going to be on the door at the Christmas dance and Mrs Paddy says anybody suspected of drinking alcohol won't be allowed in. And I've got to be allowed in. Yeah, but how do you know if Mr Nixon's going to go to the dance? Well, like I've asked him a dozen times. And I've sent him 40 Christmas cards and Christmas cards. <laughs> that must have cost you a fortune. Oh, no, my auntie owns a card shop. But anyway, it's a fourth that counts. So I went off to the off license and bought two large bottles of cider. Which we drank through a straw. Yeah. And then we ate the spring onions. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. Who made me some spring onions? <laughs> that was Doug's response as we came into the disco. Brilliant! I knew my plan would work. I'm many, but I'm not out of control. Well, I feel sick. I hate on you. <laughs> hey, Salty! Have you seen Mr. Nixon? No. Is he coming? Is he here? Brilliant! Well, have you seen him? Is he here? Do you smell onions? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nixon was in the pub with the rest of the staff. Sat very close to Miss Jackie Prime. Meanwhile, back down at the disco, Mr. D was doing Jimmy Savile impressions and playing music 30 years out of date. Yes, indeedy. This is the Human League. Don't you want big baby? <laughs> <laughs> Oxen. Oh. Gotcha. Oh, great. Get a kiss then. Look, you haven't got me mistletoe. Don't need mistletoe. Anyway, you owe me. You didn't come to my party. Oh, maybe later, eh? And then I dashed off to the toilet, leaving Oggy Moxon wondering what perfume smells like spring onions. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's a fact in life that all dance, uh, teachers dance like retards. <laughs> like they're in some kind of music documentary. Must be all the weight of the knowledge in the head that makes them look like they're dancing in the backseat of a car. <laughs> Mr. D was a supreme example <laughs> of bad dancing. <laughs> <laughs> seriousness of a big disco. All the 15 and 16 year olds looked stunning done up to the nines. Only Mr Moorcroft, head of RE, failed to be moved by the gyrating bottoms and bums. By 10.30, when things were bubbling, 
Dini plays the last song, a smoocher. And I found myself in the arms of Gail Saunders. I was confronted with a strong smell of onion. <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> it was um, kind of awkward. I didn't know how hold, hold tight to hold Gail or where to put my hands. Mrs. Parry looked on. She felt a mixture of jealousy and condemnation. But it wasn't unheard of for the teachers to dance with the students at one of them. After all, as she said, students were treated like young adults. Doug, the caretaker, cleared the dance floor in a couple of minutes. And just as I was about to lean in and kiss Mr. Nixon, he turned his head and... Merry Christmas, Doug. Now, Oggy, I've seen Miss Nixon and Gail dancing, and I've left the hall in silence. Mr. Nixon said he'd give me a lift home, and Hobby and Salty decided that they would walk and maybe get a kebab. I got into my car, and Gail jumped in beside me. And before I knew it, in jumped Oggy Moxon. <laughs> What's all this then, eh? Even a slap and ticker with a drama teacher? Hey, Gail, I thought all drama teachers are puffed us. Will you get out, Oggy? Who will you get out, Oggy? No, I won't. Get out. No, oh, no. Hey, let's go for a ride. Hey, drop me off the town. Get out. No, make me. I shan't say it again. Ooh, I shan't say it again. Make me. This is my car. This is not school time now. Look, Oggy, this isn't fair. What's not fair? You just want him all to yourself. Right, I'm going to get Mrs. Parry. Oh, uh, what the fuck is she going to do about it? <laughs> Will you just bloody get out? Make me. Ah! Oh, oh you broke my nose, you bastard. Oh, you bastard. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> Mr. Nixon was shaking. I was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Some staff came running from the school. Oggy staggered away from the car. Oh, oh. I know he's going to do you. Just you wait. I know he's going to do you. And he was off into the night. It was like a film. It was brilliant. And then in the distance you could hear. I know he's going to do you. I know he's going to fix you. And as we stood, a young boy ran past and jumped into his father's car. And a voice bellowed out. Stop running, Simon Patterson! During every lesson, I kept one eye on the main entrance in case Oggy's brother turned up. And all day I wondered how many staff said to how many kids, bring your dad up, and then wondered how many actually would. Three or four days went by and nothing happened. His brother didn't appear. Some of the teachers started to wink at Mr Nixon, as if to say, nice one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Most of my nights were spent in going over the same wrong and the same right answers. I was becoming a monk. I lived near the school, so I couldn't go to the local pub. It was full of sixth formers. And I didn't know whether to be mates with them or tell the landlord that they were underage. <laughs> so I stayed in and listened to Coldplay and James Blunt. I'm waiting to hear if I got an interview at St George's. <laughs> During January, the shine seemed to go off Nixon. You'd be quick with that one. Come on. You? <laughs> <laughs> Throw me now. Once we heard. And once we heard <laughs> that he was looking elsewhere, we sort of drifted apart for a bit. But we still had a laugh. Oh, yeah. Oh, one day. He got us to do a play about corporal punishment in schools. Me, Hobby and Gail did one about school killers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like a red phone in the staff room. It's like a bad phone. And when someone's on the line, it glows really red. Yeah. yeah. And in every classroom, under the teacher's desk, there's like this buzzer. So if the teacher's in trouble, or there's a kid getting a little bit sloppy, you know, uh, then the teacher can press the buzzer and the phone rings. Right, and in the staff room, reading old ancient books and drinking coffee are like these ninjas, Japanese martial arts experts who are trained to kill kids with like karate chops and ninja stars. <laughs> oh, and I know, they wires, right? Wires running through the staff room, so these ninjas, yeah, they can jump through the up and out the window and be on the route of the problem in seconds. Yes. Yes. Hey, hey, I'm the French assistant. I, I'm okay. And I'm, I'm teaching. Yeah. And I'll be uh, uh, of still. And I throw something at the board. Who was that? Who was that throwing missiles at my head? <laughs> was it you, Rachel Steele? What, miss? You know what? No, I don't. You frog. <laughs> and the teacher presses the buzzer for insolence. <laughs> the phone rings. The ninjas are in action. <laughs> Out of the door! Window! Coffee all over the place! In a few seconds, they break down the door. <laughs> Tear gas all over the place! What's all the January the 21st, and Mrs. Parry called me to her office. She said it was urgent. It was Oggy Moxon. He was pressing charges. I knew it. You wanted to see me, Mrs. Parry? Oh, she had done called 
you here? Is it Oggy? Is he pressing charges? Worse? His brother. He's here to fix me. No. Can you do Coco? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gill, who was playing the part, slipped a disc last night building the set. Can you step into the breach, Jeff? I'd regard it as a great personal favour. Well, what, what about Mr. Basford? Danny Basford is no Coco, Jeff. But I'm in the chorus. You can do that as well. Do it for me, Jeff. You can't let me down, Jeff Nixon. And so it was, she got me to play Coco. Wonderful, wonderful. We rehearse Wednesdays and Sunday. See you Sunday. When Bastard found out, he went balmy with the cover data. For the next three weeks, I was doing cover permanently. <laughs> French, German, <coughs> physics, rural studies, <laughs> needlework. production of the pirates lasted for four and a half hours. <laughs> it looks like this one's going to be longer. Hey, face the fronts. Sing out fronts. No, stay on stage. Don't come out and watch. Stay in the wing. It's no good saying I'm just coming out to watch this bit. No, stay on stage. Stage for the cattle market. Oh, carry up. Just do it. But for Mrs. Parry, it was close enough for jazz. Amateurs, Mr. Nixon. Never work with children, animals, or amateurs. I'm sure it'll be fine, Mrs. Parry. <clears throat> oh, I do hope so, Mr. Nixon. Do you know this is my fifth Mikado? I haven't got it right yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying. Do you know your line, Jet? Yes. Oh, well, marvellous. Do you want me to come up and do my bit? Oh, no. If you know your line, you needn't come till the dress rehearsal. <laughs> I know you'll be brilliant. OK, come on. Let's carry on. Where's the Mikado? Where, where's Nanky Poop? Where's Poop Bar? They're in the music room playing bridge. Well, tell them I want them. Now! Oi! You're bloody on! <laughs> In February, the main hall was used for mock exams. Ah, you won't be able to do any drama now, will you, Nico? Brassford scotched you this time. Seven weeks, these desks have got to stay in this hall. Dave Fisher asked him not to put him in the jeep because he could have done that though. It doesn't matter, Doug. I'm going to do drama classes in the back room of the Georgian Dragon. I hope you get that job at St George's, Mr Nixon. Did them have a face in front of you? I reckon I could teach drama anywhere and no one would care. Canteen, cookery class, sports hall, boiler room. What I couldn't figure is why school didn't have a room to do exams in. Surely some boffin since the first paper sat in Oxford could have figured out that schools needed a purpose-built in room for exams. But then, what did I know? You knew that you've got an interview at St George's. Congratulations, said Mrs Parry. She was one of my referees. So doing the GNS had its advantages. Though well, there was a rumour that Mr. Basford did the references. <laughs> and I knew he'd be glad to see me go. Drama didn't feature in his scheme of things. Now, where?
Where's my bloody class? Hey, Oppie! Oi! Your bloody hand! <laughs> We've a drama class. Yeah. Oh God. Get the script. Can't do it without the script. Be up, you can have that one as well. A page. Oh, do you know what you're doing? Right. No. No scratching. Are you page 50? Yeah. No, I'm no gonna, scratching. I'm going to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll read the ones in. No, no, go on. Just, come on. Give it to me. Go on then. Who boy? Look at that! It's a hit! Right down the middle! <laughs> That's you now. All right. Come on! Run, you mother-loving turkey! Run! Two bases! Two! Look out! There comes the throw! He missed it! Oh, it's through second! Keep going! For the love of God, keep going! Stop it! Stop it! Take another base! Mr. Nixon! Take another base! Stop it! Can I ask you to keep the noise down, Go please? Back to your I've got a sick form group and the next one is up. Now we can hardly hear ourselves think. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not Mr. Bassford. It's like an asylum in here. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? We're doing one for one with Cookie's Nest. It's set in an asylum. Quiet! Can't you keep them quiet? I said, keep the noise down! Excuse me, Mr. Bassford. I wouldn't do that to you. It's like blaming riot in here. They're enjoying themselves. Enjoying themselves? Look at them. They're screaming, trying to get out. They can't stand it. Bet there's more kids trying to get out of your classes. Watch your step, Nixon. He was pissed off because I got an interview at St. George's. Apparently, according to Mr. Dean, Mr. Basford had applied for the headship there and hadn't had his references taken up. It made him a bit unhappy. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming along, Mr. Nixon. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Obviously, we've got other candidates to see, but we'll be able to let you know whether you've been successful before the, the end of the spring term. His interview at St. George's had gone very well. Mrs. Clifton, one of the governors of St. George's, thought that he'd be outstanding. She also thought that he'd be a great asset to St. George's amateur players, a society run by Mrs. Clifton. St. George's was a sanctuary compared to Whitehall. Kids actually stood up when a teacher went into class. Nobody made a jump for the door when the bell went. And the drama studio was pure heaven. Someone even told me that the caretaker at St. George's actually sat in on some drama lessons. And no one had run through the drama studio, ever. Chalk and cheese. That was the difference. Unbelievable. Curl bits, Jeff. The great escape. You mean court? Oh yeah, court. <laughs> White Ball only had one decent tennis court. All the rest were like dirt tracks. Nixon had been invited to join in at the last minute because Mick Edwards had got a meeting with the social services. Ooh, 40 love. Wow! Oh. Dave Basford, hard luck, Mr. Dean. Mr. Dean was was thrashed by Mr. Basford. So he took his kids back to the mobiles to study the unification of Germany. <laughs> Bad loser. What? <laughs> Bossy love. Oh! Oh! Please, Basford. Hard luck, Mr. Fisher. He got bow legs. Jackie Prime told me that Mr. Basford was an ace tennis player and that he was a champion in his youth. 
Nico hadn't got any kit, so he borrowed some shorts from Big Pete Saxon and some trainers from me. Somehow, mysteriously, got a buy into the final to play Mr. Basford, who had just thrashed Jackie Prime's husband. Nico was happy about that. Hard luck, Mr. Short. When Nixon came onto the court, all the kids were laughing. They <laughs> <laughs> all looked like someone from Dr. Bernardo's. <laughs> <laughs> Not fit to them. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Mr. Nixon? All the kids had their faces pressed up against the wire of the court. <laughs> Go on, Mr. Bassford, smash the ball for who is there. Oh, oh, that was Hockey Mox. Smash it, Basford! Game, Basford! Jackie Prime smirked that kind of smirk that only PE teachers can do. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Basford! Humiliate him! shouted Doggy like a wild animal. And he tried to. It was like watching Christians in the Colosseum. <laughs> Oh, 15 love. Hold on, Mr. Nixon. Here to put a point. I didn't know you could play tennis. Yeah, he didn't know. What, none of the staff knew that I was once an under 19 tennis international. <laughs> and I thrashed the bastard. 1 6, 6 love, 6 love. Hey. Wow! Game, set, match, Nixon! <laughs> Mr. Bassford left the courts in a haste, and all the kids were gobsmacked. I could have spared him. Why should I? <laughs> As I left the courts, I bumped into Oggy Moxon. Hey, ah, nobody's gonna fix you. Great. Hey, I thought you were a fart. Didn't know you could play tennis. Mm. Neither did Mr. Basford. And you can tell your mummy that if he comes up here, he'll get this down his neck. Ooh. Hey. Right. I'll tell him. because we didn't have exams. Yeah, and none of the other teachers seemed to mind. It was brilliant. I was missing maths to do drama. Yeah. Salty was really excited. He was running around the school like a headless chicken and he even sprayed on the side of the gym in spray paint. Mr. Basford is a fat Basford. Oh. <laughs> Most of the staff found that amusing. He put Salty on a list of Easter leavers. We have to go and see Mrs. Parry. You didn't come to school to waste your time here, to fool around. We treat you like young adults and we expect you to behave accordingly. I don't think that writing swear words on a wall is a very mature thing to do. Do you? No, Mrs. Parry. So why'd you do it? Fed up, Mrs. Parry. Fed up? What are you fed up of, Ian? Loads of things, Mrs. Parry. Having to leave school. Oh, we all have to leave school, Ian. Yeah, but that's it, Mrs. Parry. Out there, there's nothing. It's just a load of lies. A load of promises that will never happen. I'm 16 and I might have wasted my time in school and now I've got to bugger off. Maybe I'm not ready for that. I'm a, I've woken up too late, Mrs. Parry. I don't want to be a piece of rhubarb. I want another chance. I've got something. What's the word I am? I'm a late developer, Mrs. Parry. I've got interest. Something I'm interested in. 
with Mr. Nixon? Who, who is it that says that, that we only get one chance? Is it God, Mrs. Parry? Because if it is, it's not the God my mum talks about. Everyone has to grow up here. Leaving school is just a part of growing up. Yeah, but nobody out there cares. If they did care, you'd be able to say to me, all right, Salty, stop on, start again, have another crack. I can't negotiate, Mrs. Parry. You can't negotiate. Who is it that traps us both? I know. Politicians, that's who. Then fellas on the telly with the stupid haircuts, talking about equality and choice and fairness. Why don't none of them live on our estate? Why don't none of them get seen down the welfare or at the bingo? They don't care about us. Do you believe what they say, Mrs. Parry? Because it's all lies. They're not bothered. And what's worse, they don't even care that they're not bothered. And I left the room. Come back here immediately, you insult! <laughs> September. Another success for the escape committee. Well, we'll have to celebrate them. after the Ricardo. We'll make it a double celebration. I got my job in Luke already. <laughs> I was obviously very pleased. The kids said I would change going to a snob school. But it was an unbelievable feeling. And for some reason, Jackie Short, Nate Prime, kissed me. It was like an enormous weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I could breathe again. I was free. Thank God I was free. I've got another interview. It's the 17th this month. <laughs> <laughs> the opening night of the Mikado was extraordinary. <laughs> St. George's. They're quite into their drama. It's what you want, isn't it? The twins are thinking of taking drama as an option, actually. This isn't a school for drama, Mixon Nixon. Never has been. 
Never will be. I'll miss the kids, though. Not for long, but save the thought for us. Mind you, every cloud has a silver lining. Mrs. Parry's asked me to play the part of Nathan Detroit in next term's production of Guys and Dolls. <laughs> and will you? My dear boy, the part was made for me. <laughs> <laughs> When Nixon left, we were very sad. Gail, Salty and me, we cried. Yeah. We never saw Nico again. Mm. Somebody told me that the posh kids loved him. When I left school, I took up a job typing. Then I did a bit of dance. Hey, I was even in the chorus of Guys and Dolls. And I, and I went to uh, work with my uncle and Doggy Moxon. On a farm. Hard work, but fun. Didn't know what I did. I could do anything, I suppose. What I really wanted to do was write songs for Katy Perry and be a millionaire. <laughs> but Mr. Harris and uh, Mr. Nixon said it was too far fetched. I'd like to, though. That's, That's it. that then. The end. The end. That's it. Oh, Mr. Harrison, just one thing before we go, eh? It's just, well, don't leave, sir. No. Don't go. Kids at this school, they, they need teachers like you. Yeah, yeah, don't leave, sir. Look, if you stay, we'll, we'll all come back, won't we? We'll, we'll book you. Yeah? Look, me ma, she, she's got me signed up for a course in her dressing. Costs 50 quid and she says it's better than nothing. Just. I'm doing a scheme, painting and decorating. Should be a laugh, crap it out. <laughs> Might be in an advert though, sir. Be a star then. I'm doing French polishing. Gonna eat it. Hey. If you do another play, we'll come back. Yeah, it's the only thing that I'll remember about this school. It's the only thing I'm good at. Hey, we, we could have a laugh. We could start a group up. Oh, yeah, yeah, we could. Uh, we could rehearse nights. Yeah, yeah. We could do all sorts of stuff. Oh yeah, we, we could do one for over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, we could do uh, comedies. Uh, tragedies. Yeah. Uh, uh, westerns. Kung fu. Ooh, romances. Sex plays. Ooh. 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 Hey, hey, sir. We could do the Mikado. He knew. <laughs> Sir, you said that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you better go. Thanks. Mrs. Hodgson as well. Oh, yeah. Mm. Come Thanks. On, Thanks, Sir. Ta da. See Bye ya. Bye then. Bye.